when it comes to the you know the culture of eight sleep how, how would you how would you describe that like the team itself uh we are a sport team playing the playoffs uh we value a lot clarity of thinking uh, we move really fast and we want to get more things done with less so we have this concept of operational efficiency or managerial leverage where i'm not the type of ceo who would be not just go around and, and talk about, oh, we have all this number of employees. I prefer to have a high number of, you know, in terms of revenue and a lower number of employees um, than the opposite. And, and I'm sure you've read like the, you know, the Netflix book, the No Rules Rules, where they really talk about the fact that the best, you know, it can be 10 times better than the average. What, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, we learn a lot from the book. What I, what I think is I'm obsessed with asking my executives uh, who are their best uh, people. And I want to give the best opportunity to these people because these people can be not the founders of tomorrow. And so they deserve to grow as fast as possible within the organization. And that is in their interest and in the interest of the enterprise. Um, and so creating fast tracks for our top performers is a must. Um, and at the same time, we need to keep uh, now giving them feedback uh, and they need to be aware of the fact that if we are happy or unhappy with the performance and if for any reason we are not happy, how they can improve it. Yeah. And and I've seen you you post on this, uh, I'm following you on, on Twitter where it's really this mindset against complacency, against mediocrity. I, I, I saw you post a quote, uh, I think like Steve Jobs had just two classifications, insanely great or total shit, right? There's like no middle ground. Um, is is this kind of your approach in, internally in the organization as well of really kind of chasing high performance? Yeah, because I used to be an athlete, right? And so I'm a, a no excuse guy and is is great or shit. Um, you try to simplify at the end of the day, right? Then it's not that it's always binary, but at the end of the day, you want to cut to the chase. And so even when I ask you know, executives to report if we are on track or not for a certain goal, at the beginning, I was giving them the green, the red, and the yellow. But now I just give them green and red because otherwise it was always yellow. Yeah, we are substantially on track, but... I don't care. Do you have more confidence? Do you have 80% confidence we're going to hit it? Or you have less than 80% confidence? And so it's green or red. Um, because at the end of the day, your job as a leader, most of the times is to just simplify. And so sometimes from outside, people can just read this stuff from Steve Jobs or the other and just consider that extreme. But at the end of the day, if you forget the word cheat or not, it's just simplifying. Is it good or bad? There is nothing else. It's, do you, uh, if you don't mind me asking, do you run into any friction internally with this? I mean, I, I know we're kind of at an interest, interesting place as a society where uh, this type of like hard charging, high performance environments, I, I, you know, I think it's what's made companies very successful and innovative in the past, but can be frowned upon, I think, kind of in the, in the public realm, if you will. Um, do you run into any of that internally? No, but I tell you the why. First, when you hire, when you hire someone for a, for a startup, it's like finding friends. You cannot be friends with everyone, right? You find people you click with because you have the same values, you have the same attitude, you have the same drive, you have the same passion. So that is step number one. And we made that mistake in the past, right? Where you try to fit people in. And you want people that are different. Let's be very clear, right? And you want people with different opinions. You want people that disagree, all, all that, 100%. But at the same time, so it's like you now when you have a friend, there are certain common values and traits that help you relate to each other. That is step number one. Then the second is while we go, when we talk about being like almost an athlete, we have a definition of a value that uh, is uh, we are everyday athletes. And so being an athlete, Sometimes people, they just think, oh, it means working super hard 24 seven all the time. It's not true because athletes, they take care of their recovery a lot, right? It's not that they train 18 hours a day, just not going to the gym over and over because they would just get injured. And so we have this definition of everyday athletes where everyone needs to be self-aware and understand when they are burning out or if they need a break or if they need to breathe and the organization will immediately support them. And so it's more about self-awareness. We don't want to burn out people. And we're pretty obsessed with helping them to maximize their potential without burning out. 